now we start our discussion on chromatography so chromatography means it is a science of identification by separation you have a mixture of compounds you want to identify what are the compounds present in that mixture so first you will separate these compounds and then we can identify them the term chromatography it is a combination of two words chroma meaning color and graphy meaning recording so this color recording that is a uh, actual meaning of the name so this technique that is identification of various components from a mixture by separation it was discovered by a russian botanist named mikhail swett way back in 1903 and he separated chlorophyll a and b separated and identified chlorophyll a and b so that was the first chromatographic separation let us look at the essential features of chromatography now in chromatography we are taking two different phases okay a phase means a solid liquid or a gas so we will take two different phases these phases are not mixable with each other we cannot mix them they are <coughs> excuse me distinct one of this phase we keep it fixed and that is called a stationary phase and another phase it is always moving and that is called a mobile phase so two phases are there stationary phase and mobile phase let us look one by one what is stationary phase what is mobile phase stationary phase it can be a solid or a viscous liquid coated on an inert solid a solid or a viscous liquid coated on an inert solid so a gas cannot be taken as a stationary phase so we have to always remember that gas can never be taken as a stationary phase example alumina silica chalk powder polyethylene glycol these are some examples alumina silica chalk powder they are solids polyethylene glycol is a viscous liquid so it is coated either on glass or some other uh, polymeric material it can be coated and it can be used so what is the function of the stationary phase the components to be separated components means the different components present in a mixture the different compounds present in a mixture they can, uh, that has to be separated will pass through this column okay separation takes place in the column or in this phase not column in this phase okay separation takes place in the stationary phase mobile phase let us look at the mobile phase mobile phase can be a liquid or a gas liquid means normal solvents like water alcohol ether etc gases like hydrogen nitrogen helium argon etc these can be used as mobile phases what is the role of the mobile phase the mobile phase carries the components to be separated throughout the stationary phase so when we are using liquids as mobile phases generally we use the term solvent also solvent phase we call it like that also general working how does a chromatographic separation work okay there are basically four steps the first step is the stationary phase is taken how to take the stationary phase that is different so depending on that we will get different chromatographic techniques okay uh, these four steps are common in all chromatographic techniques the difference is how we are doing it so first step is stationary phase is taken second step is the mixture of components is introduced we are adding that mixture of components to that and the third step is the mobile phase is added the fourth step is separated components are detected so these are the four steps 
in all chromatographic separations these are the four steps what is the general principle what is the general principle so you have two phases here a stationary phase and a mobile phase so the basic concept is affinity of a component for stationary and mobile phase okay for example if you are separating a mixture of colors you are using let us say chalk powder as the stationary phase and you are using water as the mobile phase then this each color will have an affinity for chalk powder and it will have an affinity for water also based on this relative affinity what happens the components move with different velocities throughout the stationary phase okay for example if a component has more affinity to mobile phase it will move faster if a component has more affinity to stationary phase it will move slower so when you add the mobile phase then the components which have more affinity to the mobile phase will move very fast whereas components which have more affinity for stationary phase they will move very slowly so components will move with different velocities throughout the stationary phase and this phenomenon is called differential migration differential migration and this is the basic principle behind any chromatographic separation differential migration if the stationary phase is solid then differential migration is due to adsorption so the components will be adsorbed on the stationary phase and when you add the mobile phase depending on the strength of adsorption it will get separated those which are absorbed very strongly they will move slowly those which are absorbed weakly they will move fast okay but if the if the stationary phase is a liquid then differential migration occurs due to partition what is partition now if you take a mixture of liquids a mixture of solvents and you add a solute into that this solute will distribute itself into these two solvents that is called partitioning effect okay that is called partitioning effect depending on the solubility so suppose you take a mixture like water and benzene these are immiscible these are not miscible water and benzene if you take and you add some some compound let us say you add acetic acid to that Now, acetic acid can dissolve in water acetic acid can dissolve in benzene also so depending on the solubility of that they will get distributed some of it will dissolve in benzene some of it will dissolve in water that is called partitioning so based on partitioning differential migration occurs so this is a mechanism actually adsorption and partition are the mechanism by which differential migration takes place now there are some general rules to be followed in chromatography two important rules are there we can just go through that the first rule is like this polar samples require polar stationary phase and non polar samples require non polar stationary phase So if the sample that is if the compound compounds to be separated are polar in nature we have to use polar stationary phase okay and if they are non polar in nature we have to use non polar stationary phase this is the first rule second rule is if the stationary phase is polar the mobile phase should be non polar and vice versa okay stationary phase and mobile phase should not be same stationary phase is of polar nature mobile phase should be non polar nature and opposite if stationary phase is non polar mobile phase should be polar now let us look at how chromatography can be classified so based on the mobile phase and based on the stationary phase we can classify chromatography so based on the mobile phase chromatography is classified into liquid chromatography and gas chromatography 
in liquid chromatography mobile phase is a liquid in gas chromatography the mobile phase is a gas okay then each of these can be further classified based on the stationary phase okay liquid phase is classified into two types liquid solid and liquid liquid chromatography gas chromatography is also classified into two types gas solid and gas liquid chromatography okay so if you see here if you see here the first term is re refers to the mobile phase the second term refers to the stationary phase so in liquid solid and gas solid chromatography the stationary phase will be a solid whereas in liquid liquid and gas liquid chromatography the stationary phase is a liquid so this is the classification of chromatography on the basis of uh, physical state of mobile and stationary phases okay physical state of the stationary and mobile phase so this is one important question explain the principle and classification of chromatography another question what are the classification of chromatography based on the physical state of mobile and stationary phases so these are two important questions based on polarity that is polarity of the stationary phase we can classify chromatography into two categories one is called normal phase chromatography the other is called reverse phase chromatography normal phase and reverse phase let us see what is that if the stationary phase is polar that is called normal phase chromatography if the stationary phase is non polar that is called reverse phase chromatography so based on the polarity of the stationary phase we have normal phase and reverse phase chromatography what are the different techniques available there are numerous techniques n number of techniques are there but we are going to study only four important techniques that that is prescribed in our syllabus okay thin layer chromatography column chromatography gas chromatography and high pressure liquid chromatography these are the four important techniques that we are going to study now here i have given these two in blue color that is because these two are instrumental techniques instrumental chromatographic techniques they require very costly instruments okay whereas these two that is thin layer and column they are not costly they can be done using simple lab apparatus so let us start our discussion with the first technique okay sophisticated instrument techniques these two are sophisticated instrument techniques so we will start our discussion with the first technique thin layer chromatography short form is plc so from the name itself we will get some idea thin layer it refers to the stationary phase stationary phase is taken as a thin layer okay stationary phase is a solid mobile phase is a liquid principle is differential migration and mechanism is adsorption okay so stationary phase is a solid the mobile phase is so in this technique plc or thin layer chromatography stationary phase is a solid mobile phase is a liquid principle in all techniques is same differential migration mechanism here is adsorption because stationary phase is a solid the technique is applied when mixtures are present in minute quantity only okay suppose you have only 1 ml of a mixture then we can use this technique to find out what the components are physical separation of the components is not possible physical separation means you cannot separate two components 
and you cannot put them in two different bottles. Okay, you can only identify, you can only find out whether these components can be separated or what these components are that you can find out. Physically, you cannot separate the components. How does a chromatographic separation work? Now here what is done is the stationary phase is coated on a glass plate as a thin layer. That is why the name thin layer chromatography has come. And this is a glass plate. It is called as a chromatographic glass plate. Okay. And on this we are coating a thin layer of the stationary phase. Thin layer of stationary phase is coated on an inert material like glass. This is a TLC plate. Then the sample is spotted on one end. Okay. So this glass is taken, uh, the, the stationary phase is coated and on one end you make a spot okay, with a capillary tube. You dip a capillary tube in the mixture and just press it on this plate so that one drop will fall on this uh, plate okay so that is the second step the first step is take the stationary phase a thin layer of stationary phase is spotted on inert material second step is a sample is spotted on one end take the mixture third step is you have to introduce the you have to add the mobile phase so for that this plate is vertically kept in a container which has the mobile phase dipped in the mobile phase and kept vertical the dlc plate is dipped in the mobile phase and kept vertical now what will happen when you dip it like this this mobile phase will rise upwards and in that process it will separate the components due to differential migration okay so this is how a thin layer chromatography experiment works. Now let us look at it in little more detail. You have the spot here and when the, when the solvent that is the mobile phase rises, the components get separated. Like Okay, so this is your spot. These are the three different components. They get separated like this. Now at the top, you can find a line like this. This line is a solvent, the solvent line. Okay, the solvent when it moves, it moves like a line like this. From the uh, bottom, it will move like a line. You can you can see, you can observe that line here and that line is called as the solvent front. It is given a name. It is called the solvent front. How do we develop the spores? Suppose the compounds are colorless. Now in the earlier case, you saw three different colors, blue, green and red. The compounds were colored. But suppose the compounds are colorless. Then what will we do? We have to develop the spot. We have to observe the spots. For that, what will we do? We can highlight the spots using iodine vapor. So when you use iodine vapor, that will get deposited on these spots. These are organic compounds. It will get deposited there and we can see a color. Or you can highlight using potassium permanganate. That also gives a color. Or you can irradiate with UV light and you can view that with a special type of glasses so that you can see a blue color on the spots. Okay, so this is how we can develop the spots for colorless compounds. Explain the visualization techniques in TLC. This is a question that is asked. Visualization technique means how to develop the spots. Okay, so these are the three methods for visualizing, for developing the spots. Now let us consider our T 
DNC plate again. This is the spot that we have done. These are the different samples that are separated. Let us assume. Let the distance between this main spot and the solvent front. Let that be capital L. And let the distance between this spot and this compound, blue compound. Let that be equal to small l. So there is a relation between these two. Small l divided by capital L is equal to R. And R stands for retention factor. Retention factor. Now what is this retention factor? Retention factor is the distance traveled by the component divided by distance traveled by the solvent or mobile phase. Okay. This is the mobile phase. Mobile phase it is traveling so much distance. But this compound, it was here at, at earlier, it was in the mixture. This compound has traveled only this much distance. Okay. So this distance divided by the total distance, that is the retention factor. Okay. Now what is the significance of this retention factor? Using the retention factor, we can identify several compounds. We can identify the different compounds. The range of retention factor is 0 to 1. The value of retention factor ranges from 0 to 1. And the same compound has the same RF value under similar conditions. Okay. So under similar conditions, if you take a compound like you have a compound benzene. So if you find that benzene has an RF value, let us say 0 0.2 under a particular condition. Then, if the condition is maintained, the, the RF value of benzene will always remain 0.2. So, we can identify different compounds. We can identify what the compound is based on the RF value. So, that we can see some applications. These are two important applications of RF. Identifying components in the mixture, comparing polarity of substances. Okay, these are two important applications. Again, or used as a test method before bulk separation. Okay, we can use this as a test method. Suppose you have a mixture of three compounds. You have, let us say, one liter of a mixture of three compounds. You want to separate that into three different parts. But you don't know what is the mobile phase or what is the stationary phase that you can use. So you have to do a trial and error. Okay, select several mobile phases, select several stationary phases, and you have to do trial and error. The trial and error can be done with TLC. Because you require only one drop of the sample for one TLC. So you can do a large number of trial and error with TLC. That is why it is said used as a test method before bulk separation. Applications of TLC. These are also similar. Identifying compounds. Checking purity of compounds. Monitoring progress of a chemical reaction, comparing polarity of solvent as a tool of reference. These are also similar. Okay. The applications of RF and applications of TLC, they are similar. What are the advantages of TLC over other techniques? What are the advantages? The first advantage is less time is required. Only little time is required, we will get the result within 10 to 15 minutes and can be done with minute quantities. That is the advantage. Less time is required, can be done with minute quantities. So that is all about thin layer chromatography. Now, suppose we want to physically separate a mixture of compounds. You have a mixture of three compounds. You are given one liter of a solution which contains a mixture of three compounds. You are given three empty bottles. You want to separate these compounds and put, fill it in these three bottles. Then what will we do? We cannot do TLC. TLC will tell you which is the best stationary phase and best mobile phase that you can use for this purpose. But TLC cannot physically separate and give you these compounds. For that, we have to use the next chromatographic technique. So 
So before that, this is an important question. Define R of a compound. What are its applications? Okay. So the next technique that you are going to use. Column chromatography. For that, we will be using column. That is to physically separate a mixture of compounds. We will be using column chromatography. So column. What do you mean by a column? So we can see that. Here again, stationary phase is a solid. Mobile phase is a liquid. Me principle is differential migration. Mechanism is absorption. All are same. Just like TLC. Okay. Then, the technique can be applied only for large quantities of mixtures. Physical separation of components is possible. Okay. These are the two things which are different from TLC. In TLC, we can use it for small quantities also, minute quantities also, but we cannot physically separate. Here, we can use it only for large quantities. Physical separation is possible. How does the column chromatography work? Let us see. So a column means it's a cylindrical tube. A cylindrical tube with a nozzle at one end and inside that you are filling with the stationary phase. This is called as a column. Okay. Take a cylindrical tube with a nozzle at one end, something like a burette similar to a burette, a little large burette and fill the stationary phase into that. That is called the column. So the first step is take the stationary phase. Stationary phase is taken in a column and it is kept vertical. It is clamped vertically. Then second step. What is the second step? You are adding the mixture of components. The mixture of components is added at the top. Not a drop. You are adding the entire thing. The entire thing that has to be separated is added at the top. Then the third step is introducing the mobile phase. So the mobile phase, how we can introduce that? Just add the mobile phase at the top of the uh, mixture of components. Okay. You are adding the mobile phase at the top of the mixture of components. So what will happen here? Now this mixture, when you are adding these components, they will get absorbed here. And when you add the mobile phase, depending on the affinity, the components will start moving with different velocities downward. You are keeping it vertical, you are adding the mobile phase. So due to gravity, the mobile phase will slowly, slowly come down, percolate down. And in that process, due to differential migration, it will separate the components. Okay, the components will get separated like this. So this is how this technique is working. Okay, column chromatography. Now, let us take this column. You are adding the components. You continue this addition of the mobile phase. When this has got separated, now you continue addition of the mobile phase. So this will start coming down. They will start moving downwards. And finally, at one point, what will happen is the first component will come down. Okay, you can collect that in the container. Then again, you continue addition of the mobile phase. The second component will come out. You can collect that in the container, in a bottle. And then after some time, the third component will come down. You can collect that in another bottle. So physical separation of the components is possible. Now this process is called elution. Removal of a component completely from the column. That is called elution. You are eluting the component. And since you are using the mobile phase for this purpose, the mobile phase is called eluent. The mobile phase is also called eluent. So longer the column, better is the pressure. Now you can see here, 
these two compounds are separated. Okay, these two compounds are also separated. If you if the if you increase the length of the column, this gap will increase. Proportionately, it will increase. Okay, the longer the column, better is the separation. But longer the column, slower will be elution. You require more time, you require more mobile phase for this components to get separate components to come out of the column, completely come out of the column. So longer the column, slower is the elution. What are the advantages of this technique? What are the advantages? Simple and versatile. Physical separation of compounds is possible. You can physically separate a mixture of compounds. You can separate large quantities of mixtures. 1 liter, 2 liter, 10 liters of mixtures. You can separate. Then applications. What are the applications of this technique? Many applications are there. Mainly purification. Separation and purification of solids and liquids. Okay. Separation and purification of organic compounds from plant materials, plant extracts. So if you extract a, a plant, there will be several compounds. You can separate that using chromatography. Separate and purify natural compound mixtures like alkaloids, glycosides, etc. So these are some of the applications of chromatography. So this important question, write a note on column chromatography. So write a note means you can write the principle and the procedure. That is enough. Why TLC is superior to column chromatography for checking purity of a compound? Okay. Why TLC is superior? That is the advantages of TLC. That is what is out of right. Why TLC is superior? So the advantages of TLC. Okay. 